by Santorini in Greece. It's a popular spot with something like 3.4 million visitors every year. You've probably seen pictures of Santorini in advertisements for Greek tourism. We're here in early spring, well before the summer crush. It's very pretty, and it's easy to see why so many people enjoy visiting Santorini. It's expensive, but not really a tourist trap. Because there is so much to explore and do. But I can see how in summer, too many visitors could overwhelm in the narrow streets. Santorini Island is actually the rim around the caldera of a massive dormant volcano. It last erupted in 1950. The really big one was 3,600 years ago and it shaped the island in ways that you can still see today. So this part of Santorini ended up completely covered with pumice, metres deep. And that's why years later, uh, when people were digging up the pumice to sell it, that's how they discovered the, the site. And what a site they found. The ruins of an ancient Minoan city now called Akrotiri. It had been a trading city, very prosperous, with multi-storey houses and sewage and even inside toilets. We don't know the population, certainly hundreds, but perhaps thousands of people. Well, this site has been called Greece's Pompeii, but it's actually a lot older than Pompeii. 1650 BC, this city was destroyed by a volcano, earthquake and a volcano. All of this was preserved under, under the ash, and it wasn't even discovered until quite recently, like 100 years ago. So, extraordinary. And because it's such a special site, the Greek government's gone through a lot of trouble to actually make sure this place is preserved. That's why it's totally encased. It could be a much, much bigger site than what's currently been excavated. So there's still a lot more to learn about these ancient people, Minoans. But the astonishing discovery here was the elaborate frescoes on the walls. Protected for 3,600 years by the layers of ash, the Akrotiri art is some of the best preserved Minoan art yet found. The Minoans were great traders and seafarers. One of the frescoes depicts blue monkeys at play, but the species is not from Africa, but is thought to be from India, which shows how far their trade routes extended 3,600 years ago. The main centre for the Minoans was on the island of Crete, 110 kilometres away. The royal palace of Knossos was rediscovered and excavated in the early 1900s, revealing signs of a successful and prosperous culture. What's surprising is how to the modern eye some of their art seems so contemporary. But the Minoans disappeared. It's now thought that the Santorini eruption of 1650 BC was one of the most explosive in history, Krakatoa-sized, with the ash clouds circling the globe 
dimming the sun and affecting the world's weather for years. The effects were recorded as far away as China and in ice cores from Greenland. But much closer to Santorini, the Minoan homeland of Crete was hit by massive tsunamis, destroying their ports and harbours. And that's before the weather effects of the ash cloud crippled their crops. The Minoans never fully recovered. Within a hundred years, their civilization was gone. 300 years later, Plato wrote his famous story about Atlantis, the fabulous lost island city. Could Plato's story have been inspired by the eruption at Santorini and the fate of Akrotori? These days, Santorini is famous for its peaceful beauty and its sunsets. But I wonder how many of the millions who visit realise that the volcano below is still very much alive, but only sleeping, for now.